smell that, Liz? I do. It smells. It smells really good. It smells like Shabbat or Passover. Yeah. It smells like my grandmother's It smells like the holidays. Yeah. yeah. What are we gonna make? We we're making chicken soup and matzo balls. Yeah, and we've got we've got chicken soup. It's been actually it's been going for about three hours now. So, this kitchen smells amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that smell is kind of creeping into every every corner. It somehow of the finds house. its way yeah. into every closet and nook and cranny. You know it's Passover. You yeah. know it's Shabbat because of that chicken soup smell. So, all right. So we've got we've got the soup going. We'll we'll get to that. Yeah, but yeah. maybe l let's make let's make matzo balls. Let's make the the classic. Let's make let's make knedel. Uh, listen, I I love making matzo balls. Knedlach. I. Um, I find that often we use matzo ball soup mixes or you use the matzo meal from the store. Yep. But one of the interesting things about matzo meal is that it's a modern innovation. It's totally. a byproduct of the matzo industry and you have all this cracked matzo, leftover matzo, you can turn it into a meal. But I like to make my own matzo meal. And yeah. it's really easy to do. Yeah, it is, it's fun too. So uh, let's make it. Let's do it. So we're gonna cr smash our matzas up and let's get them. Nicely packed here, and uh, rock and roll. Yeah. You want to do the, the first smash? Yeah, yeah. I want to do the first smash. Okay, so we've got this, you know, our, our mallet, and we just got like about three matzo. Yeah, yeah. Matzo. Three yeah. Matzos. All right. Oh, oh, it's very satisfying. It actually, satisfying. this is this is, feels great. Yeah, go for it. Thank you. Man. That's fun. Break it up nice. One of the nice things about making your own matzo meal is that you can get some nice texture in the matzo ball as well, and it doesn't have to be the same uh, same consistency, consistency. Yeah, as the typical yeah. matzo balls. And it's a nice little touch of home. And I just like to, always like to just go through. Yeah. So, so all right. I think that we. It looks. I think it's good. It's pretty so let's crushed. Let's see what's going on in there. Oh wow! Look, here's our matzo meal. A little bit more like a matzo farfel, depending on the sizes. Nice. Uh, well, we can, you know, we can, we can keep crushing smaller. it. But yeah. again, I like that texture, so I'm gonna. Make it a little Love smaller, it. and then let's, uh, let's let's use this. Let's do it. Okay, great. And so about one matzo is about a quarter cup of matzo, matzo meal. meal. Yeah. So if you're doing your substitutions, and I'm just going to go through with my hand and just crunch a few of the yeah. big ones. Now another way of doing this uh, that's maybe a little bit better for getting smaller pieces is using the food processor. Right. And so we'll just put a whole you know a whole matzo a whole piece of matzo into the food processor, run it for about 20 seconds, and you've got yourself your homemade matzo meal. Mm -hmm. So. You never have to buy matzo meal again. Okay, so you've got your matzo meal. What so, else, you know, I think you're gonna put a little more matzo I meal always, in. You know, I always have a little bit of leftover matzo meal at home too, and I always, for good measure, I just put a, a little bit of a finer matzo meal into my mixture. Yep. Um, and so we're gonna add that. Uh, of course, we wanna add some salt, yep. some kosher salt gotta into do salt. our matzo, mm -hmm. matzo ball mix. Can you get, some, get a little more, uh, oh, I have get some a little more, more of that salt you. in there, yeah. yeah. Great. Okay, and then basic. Um, well, this is a big question. This is some baking powder, and it's a. Uh, do we want a sinker or a floater? I mean, that's kind of a, one of those big binaries uh, within the uh, yeah. Jewish food spectrum. You know, where do you fall on that? Well, you know, I certainly grew up with more floater matzo balls, but as I started crushing my own matzo, liking a little bit more texture in my matzo ball, I have started to get really into the sinkers. You know, so I can go either way. This was a big debate at my home. My grandmother made a dense sinker matzo mm -hmm. ball. My, my mother made mm -hmm. a floater, a fluffier matzo ball. And yeah. I, frankly, I tend to go with my grandmother's cooking, but my mother's matzo balls were pretty good too. So I, I like to do something, a hedge, somewhere in between. Yeah. So I'm gonna put a little bit of baking powder and a little bit goes a long way. And people will say that, you know, you put seltzer and, and or egg whites, but I, I'd say in our experience, you know, baking powder is sort of the... It's kind of a magic. Yeah, magic, it's yeah. sort of the, <laughs> the easiest yeah. solution. I've never found seltzer to really make a difference, but I'm sure I'll get angry letters about that. And I'm just going to mix this together. Uh, awesome. Mix it nice. And one of the things I will say about the seltzer piece is like, you know, it's never a bad idea to put seltzer in anything because seltzer is so wonderful. So yeah. um, if you want to try it, great. But um, yeah. frankly, I don't, I don't think it's necessary also. Yeah. So we mix that together. Great. So you've got the dry ingredients there. I'm going to get into the wet ingredients here. Um, so we, um, we of course, we've got some schmaltz. Oh, this and this is, is yeah. key. And I think that, um, you know, when I grew up, we didn't necessarily have schmaltz in our matzo balls. Uh, we didn't have that rendered poultry fat flavor in our matzo mm -hmm. balls. But you and I both know this is obviously key to yeah. a very tasty matzo ball. Uh, so if you're making vegetarian matzo ball soup, obviously don't use schmaltz. You can swap for an oil, a vegetable oil, very like simple, less flavorful vegetable oil, mm -hmm. like a grapeseed oil. Um, but uh, if you are going for schmaltz, go for schmaltz. I mean, this is duck schmaltz here. It's, and not just for flavor, it really does change the texture of the matzo ball as well. 
Uh, and uh, it also adds a richness to the soup, and you're gonna, that's some of that fat yes. is going to kind of ooze into the soup as you cut up your matzo ball. And, no uh, it's doubt. it's really nice. Great, so we've got our schmaltz. We've also got, um, something that we like to do is pull a little of the stock out of the uh, matzo ball soup, uh, the soup itself yeah. that we're making, and pour that into our matzo balls instead of using water. Yeah. Um, again, again, we wanna add that flavor. We yeah. could just use water or seltzer, but it, we, wanna, we want a rich matzo ball that can stand on its own. Um, yep, and of course we've got some eggs. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna whip all that up. Yeah. And then we can combine these two. So when you're mixing your dry ingredients into the wet, you want to make sure not to over mix. Uh, if you over stir, if you work it too much, your, um, your matzo ball mixture uh, will likely come apart when you're trying to make your matzo balls. Or it can be really dense. I mean, it's like too much gluten. Yeah. Um, we also, um, something I love to do is actually chop up a bunch of herbs, mm. fresh herbs, like fresh parsley, dill, very, very small, very fine, um, totally minced, and actually put that into the yeah. mixture so that I have color, extra color, extra flavor in my matzo ball. So that's one of my favorite things to do. I don't think, we're not doing it today, we're going more traditional, but mm -hmm. um, that's sort of something I've been doing for a long time now, and it's always a real hit because, um, you know, you have that color popping out uh, mm -hmm. in the bowl. Uh, I'll just say, when I was a kid, I was not allowed to do much in the kitchen, but I formed the matzo balls, and I used to stick nice. little bits of soup chicken into the matzo ball. Oh, itself, I love doing that, and too. And it's a really nice, uh, a nice little trick that I still yeah, use just, today. Just roll it in. You roll it in. Love it. Okay, so let's do let's it. Do, I'm going to uh, yeah. add this here slowly, Great. and you're going to mix. I think you should do it all at once. Okay. And I'm just going to pour, I'm going to try and mix it as little as possible. Okay, there you go. Great. Okay, so essentially we want to fold this, and once this is, um, fully stirred, we're actually, we're actually gonna put this in the refrigerator mm -hmm. um, for about 30 minutes or so. And that is an important step. Um, if you don't let this mixture sit and soak up, um, you know, all of the egg and the liquid into the matzo ball, it will, into the, into the actual matzo, it will yeah. fall, fall apart. You're not gonna form as, as successful of matzo balls. And this is great for planning ahead. You can make the matzo ball mixture in the morning and then you can make your matzo balls later. Of course, you can have matzo balls made well in advance as, uh, as, well, as well, but this is just a, you know, it's a nice way uh, to, um, you know, plan your cooking strategy for the Shabbat or for the Passover or for whatever meal you're using matzo balls for. All right, we're ready to go. Let's put this in the fridge. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the soup because to me the soup is, um, I think it's the real star of the show. Yeah. That's 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 what I Listen, think. That's, um, that's you know. Fair. Okay, so what do we have in here? We've got a whole chicken mm -hmm. that we put in. Um, we've got uh, carrots. We've got celery. We've got onion. Very classic combination. Mm -hmm. uh, we put some black peppercorns in there, and uh, obviously salt. We've been salting over the course of time, over the mm -hmm. course of the three hours. And about an hour ago, we threw in some thyme, some fresh thyme. Some people like to put in fresh dill. We also put in some parsley. Mm -hmm. So it's really flavorful. It's aromatic. It's herbaceous. Um, and it's getting kind of dark because we, um, you know, we've been going for a while. And yeah. we do have some onion skins on there as well. Yeah, which helps brown it out, but add a lot of flavor too. And the other thing I think is something that uh, I know was a big um, important part of chicken soup in my family's tradition is chicken feet. Oh, uh, which, yeah. Uh, Let's why don't you take a look at Liz? that. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, there's a there's some that is a chicken foot right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of those in there. Yeah, and that adds uh, not just flavor, it adds some collagen to the broth. Uh, uh, it is going to be a really nice addition. Um, I know a lot of people who add flanken, uh, uh, beef flanken in their in their chicken soup as well for depth of flavor and um, yeah. other chicken necks as well. And this is really kind of part of that resourceful Ashkenazi tradition of using all parts of the chicken, all parts of the bird, and it's a uh, really one of the things that inspires us most about Ashkenazi cooking. Yeah, and, and I love I love when you have, you know, when you use a lot of chicken feet mm -hmm. and you cool the broth mm -hmm. and then it, it kind of jiggles, you know, yeah, yeah. that that is an awesome thing. You want that gel. That's when you know you've done it correctly. Yeah. The, people might call that bone broth today, but yeah. And, you know, charge you an arm and a leg for it. That's true. It's that's true. what it is. Uh, cool. So that's going and um, I think it's pretty much done. So we'll Let's, turn it off uh -huh. um, and we will strain it out. We'll strain out all, um, we'll strain out the vegetables. Mm -hmm. uh, but some people actually cook it for a little bit less time and they use the vegetables that they put in the soup and they actually serve those vegetables. Mm -hmm. But I know you and I really like to strain it out really well 
and cook some vegetables and we separately. We want to get all the yeah. flavor from the vegetables we yeah. use, and then we'll we'll add some fresher tasting vegetables in our soup. Uh, there's so many ways of making chicken soup. It's yeah. one of the most versatile Jewish foods, and that's what's so amazing about uh, getting to make chicken soup together. Is we both bring some of our own family yeah. traditions to bear. Yeah. So. I turned that off and that's hanging out. Let's let's throw some matzo balls into uh, into the pot. Fantastic. Okay, so we have our salted water and our chilled matzo ball mix, and let's form some matzo balls. Let's do it. So I always have a bowl of water, cold water, next to me. So I'm going to wet my hands, and I'm going to form the ball. Beautiful. And I'm just going to. Do kind of a medium-sized matzo ball. This is definitely something that uh, it's a big debate. Uh, right, the size. Certain, yeah. You know, Liz, you grew up going to a deli with a matzo ball that was. It's quite like large. these giant matzo balls, and I love those giant matzo balls. I still, every time I go home, which is pretty frequently, uh, I still get that matzo ball pretty much every time. Well, yeah. I prefer. I like to have a, a few different matzo balls, so I always want to have mm -hmm. three or four in my bowl. It just makes my holiday experience. So I like to make them a little bit smaller. But um, I think we're going to hedge again today and do a medium-sized matzo ball. Yeah, sure. It feels good. Mm, these are forming nicely. These Great. Are gonna be, these are going to be good matzo balls. Yeah, no, I can tell. These are going to be awesome. And one little trick that I, I know people do when they're making matzo balls on a large scale, and delis do this a lot, is they form matzo balls with ice cream scoops. Yes, then you get a uniform size. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing. And the other thing is, you can also make your matzo balls in advance. And you know, we would always s freeze them in, the, in, in broth. And then you just defrost the whole thing. But there's other people that just freeze them on their own, and it's fine, you know. Mm -hmm. So you can make matzo balls in advance. Um, and you know, it's worth saying that if you do have a lot of broth, you can actually, you know, you can cook your matzo balls in in broth uh, or in stock. We just generally cook them separately because you will get some pieces that fall off. So you don't necessarily want to eat the same liquid that you've cooked them in. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just using salted water. But certainly, if you've got a lot of stock hanging around, go for it. Cook them in there. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna, beautiful. We're gonna put the lid on. Well, we're gonna let it boil, and then we're gonna put the lid on and let it simmer and cook for about for, 20, yeah, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah Till they're cooked through. Great. Our matzo balls are ready. Let's let's yeah. build our soup. Yeah. Let's do it. And you've got two matzo balls per your preference. Listen, you I, I, I like to have a lot of matzo balls. Yeah. No, that's great. That's great. Okay. So all right, we've got our matzo balls. We've got some chicken that we pulled from uh, from the soup. Get a good amount of chicken there. Yeah, I like that. Great. Um, and then we've got the vegetables that we mm -hmm. that we cooked separately, so they're nice and fresh. Just some extra carrots and celery. Nice. Great. Great. And then uh, one of our favorite delis, and one of the delis that I used to go to a lot as a child, was the Second Avenue Deli, and. They would bring you a matzo ball, they'd bring you everything that you need in the soup, and then they'd come and they'd pour the broth into the soup at the table. And I there was love just that. something about the ceremony, the ritual of it, the theater of it all. It just, that really told you that you're at the Jewish deli. You're at the, what, you know, a lot of people refer to as the secular synagogue. And uh, it was um, sort of like an opening ceremony of sorts. All right, let's do it. Let's dig in. I can see that texture. Yeah, you, you know? can see the little it's bits great. of that matzo. Yeah. That's what's fun, you know. Awesome. Oh, that's great. It's everything you want. That's Jewish comfort food. There it is. Yeah, distilled into this form. Oh, totally. It's amazing. It's Jewish penicillin right there. That's mm -hmm. it.